Hey y'all, we're Gary and Jen. We're about to go on our first Royal Caribbean cruise. It's a seven night cruise to Cozumel, Costa Maya, Belize, and Honduras. That's right, we're going on the Grandeur of the Seas, which is Royal Caribbean's oldest ship, which uh, first set sail back in 1996. And it's also one of their smallest ships. And we're gonna find out whether that saying is true, whether it's not the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. Um, okay, apparently that saying has nothing to do with boats or the ocean. So we're just gonna check out the ship and, and see what kind of fun they have on it. We'll see you on board. Well, let's see, here we go. Watch your head there, babe. If he doesn't say watch your head, it says, no. <laughs> Royal Caribbean's Grandeur of the Seas has 10 guest accessible decks. Decks 2 and 3 contain only guest staterooms. Deck 4 is the first deck you will access when you board the ship. At the center is the main hub of the ship called the Centrum. Throughout the cruise, the Centrum offers multiple entertainment activities, such as contests between cruisers, live music, and the ever hilarious silent disco, where guests are given a pair of headphones and dance to music only they can hear. The Centrum is also home to the R Bar. The lower level of the two-story main dining room, the Great Gatsby, is also located on deck four along with the chef's table, which is a specialty dining restaurant. Deck five contains the upper level of the Great Gatsby, as well as Casino Royale, the ship's casino. Casino Royale has table games like blackjack, poker, roulette, and craps, as well as numerous slot machines. You will also find the Casino Bar inside of Casino Royale. On Deck 5, you will also find guest services, shore excursions, and the loyalty desk. The lower level of the ship's two-story main entertainment venue, the Palladium Theater, can be found on Deck 5. The Palladium Theater hosts Broadway-style shows, comedians, jugglers, as well as other shows, such as Love and Marriage. It also shows movies on sea days. On deck six, you will find the upper level of the Palladium Theater. Towards the middle of the ship on deck six, you will find the duty-free Centrum shops. along with the photo gallery and shop, art gallery, and the Cafe Latitudes coffee shop. At the rear of the ship is the South Pacific Lounge, which hosts larger entertainment activities like bingo, as well as game shows like Who Wants to Be a Caribbean Air and Battle of the Sexes. There's also a bar which opens for service when there are larger events going on. During the daytime, it offers some of the most spectacular views from the ship. Deck 6 is also home to Schooner's Bar, which offers live piano music, as well as games like Name That Tune. There are also two specialty dining restaurants located on Deck 6. Chop's Grill is a classic American steakhouse with amazing views. and Giovanni's Table offers classic Italian dishes with equally incredible views. Deck 7 is all staterooms and where you will find most of the balcony staterooms. Deck 8 is also all staterooms and where most of the suites are located. On Deck 9 you will find the Windjammer Buffet which is the go-to place to eat on the ship. It serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner.
Deck 9 is also the main deck for outdoor lovers. It is where you will find the main swimming pool and hot tubs. There is also a huge movie screen where they show videos and movies every day throughout the cruise. This area is also where they host the sail away party. You will also find the solarium, which is the adults only area for those 16 and older. This is a covered area where you will find another swimming pool, as well as four additional hot tubs. The solarium bar is also located in this area. At the rear of Deck 9 is the Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness Center for those looking to relax even more on the cruise. The Park Cafe is located in the solarium and is a popular spot on the ship. Not only can you get food items like fresh sandwiches and salads, it's also the place where you can grab a slice or two of pizza. Deck 10 offers more outdoor activities, like a running track, shuffleboard, and the rock climbing wall. At the front of the ship, there is another area to lounge about called the Observatory. Deck 10 also contains the area for younger guests, which includes the Adventure Ocean Program, Teen Center, Video Arcade, and Nursery. Deck 11 is home to the Viking Crown Lounge, which turns into the ship's nightclub in the late evening. It also has an observation lounge which offers incredible views over the pool deck. The observation lounge is also a designated quiet space in the early evening, so it's a great place to escape. It also hosts live music and events. The Concierge Club Lounge is also located on Deck 11 for guests in Grand Suite Level Rooms and Higher, Diamond Plus, and Pinnacle Club Crown and Anchor Society members. Deck 12 is home to the specialty restaurant Izumi which offers fresh sushi and Asian-inspired dishes. We're going to take a tour of our room. We are in room number 7048. It's a balcony room. As you come in to the left over here, uh, there's your cabinets. Got a lot of hanging space for clothes with hangers and all. Also, a bunch of drawers to store your belongings. double hanging area. Uh, to your right is the bathroom. It's, it's actually a smaller bathroom. Uh, got your shower, toilet. They uh, give you quite a bit of storage space, so that's great. Uh, little cabinets. The sink, the Geary. Lots of mirrors to see and to get ready with. Come back out, you've got a bed. Got a couch with a gin. Not every room comes equipped with those. No, you're special. Got a storage space down there, to little shelves to put things. Television, I mean, it's not a big television but it comes on a swivel, so if you're laying in the bed, you can adjust it out to, to watch it over there or turn it back if you're sitting on the couch to be able to sit and watch it. Uh, we don't plan on watching a whole lot of television anyway because we plan on enjoying the ship and all the ports. Um, you got a little sitting area to, to get ready with, nice makeup station, uh, lots of lights and mirrors. You got plenty of cabinet space with a little safe. Down below, there is a mini refrigerator. A 
lots of drawers to store things in. A telephone from the 1970s. As far as outlets, they've got two, two US style ones and uh, one European style. And then the balcony. Got two chairs and a little table. And a nice view. Port of Tampa is not exactly the best view, but it's still nice to be able to sit out here. And that'll be a lot better than the other ports we go to. So that's our room. Alright, so we're on the last night of our cruise, a couple hours, and we'll be back in port in Tampa. Um, so, thought we would share with you our experience on the, the grandeur of the seas for this seven-night cruise we just went on. So, uh, talk about some of the good points we had. Um, getting on the ship in the first place, the embarkation process was probably the smoothest we've ever been through. Uh, I think it... It took maybe 20 minutes from the time we parked the car until we were on the boat. And that, that, was, that was literally taking everything out of our car, walking a block up the street, dropping our bags off, going through security, going through the check-in process, and actually walking onto the boat. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. We thought our last cruise that took an hour was great. And, uh, <laughs> you know, 20, 20 minutes, and, and we were on board enjoying it. So the Grandeur of the Seas is a 27-year-old ship, and we were really impressed at the condition of it. They, uh, they've taken very good care of it. Our Last. Everything was in good condition, and it, they had updated things um, to make it current. Um, like the, the screens in the theater, and by every stairwell, there was this screen you could go up to and push whatever you, wherever you wanted to go, and it would bring it up and map it out for you. Yeah, it. Um, I think compared to our last cruise on Margaritaville at Sea, which the ships are very similar in age, only a couple of years difference, this one was way more up to date than it was. So definitely an improvement there. As far as our room, it, for a balcony room, it was, it was a decent sized room. Mm -hmm. It initially seemed a little small, but you know, once spending time in it, it, it actually was very functional and, and a lot of room to me. So I loved the vanity. Yeah. So yeah, she, um, it gave her plenty of room to put makeup on lots of light. Um, they actually have, a lot of storage in the room so plenty of drawers and cabinets to, to put things in so uh, that was good the bed is kind of a a good and bad for us i loved it it was a firm mattress i do not like a firm mattress <laughs> so she didn't sleep as well as i did but i i really enjoyed it um great water pressure in the bathroom i mean they you didn't have to worry about that so love the water pressure that that was good and bad, and I'll get to that in a minute of where it was bad. Entertainment. Um, the live production shows they had on there were absolutely phenomenal. They were great. Uh, um, the comedian Basil was awesome. Uh, Basil fans, or basillive.com. Yeah. Um, the shows they did, um, it was like through the ages, kind of. Yeah, it was a lot of Broadway stuff, and I mean, great performers and all that and very talented so we uh we really enjoyed it they had a good show in the theater every night and there was a guy that was a juggler which we thought at first was like a juggler how exciting could that be but he was this, good this guy was good um and he's been doing it for a really long time and that night the boat was really rocking so the fact he was juggling stuff with a, a stage that was moving um says something about his talent that he has so as far as um the food were kind of mixed on it. It was, there were good days and bad days and... Well, I think, you know, there were a lot of options in a lot of different places that you could eat. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, the food wasn't <laughs> the top, top point on the cruise. Um, it's what you would expect from pre-prepared food. Yeah, or, or mass production of it. It, mm -hmm. we, there were some good things. I, I enjoyed the French onion soup that they had. The escargot was really good. Uh, but there had there were other dishes that were very bland, had no flavor, um, and would never do again. So food was, mm, 
It's, all right, so uh, let's kind of talk about. Hold on, I do want to say that the service on board was beyond phenomenal. Yeah, everyone was great from. You know, the pool deck to the bar to customer service to everywhere on the ship. The dining room, I mean, service was just above and beyond. And I have to give credit to Royal Caribbean for that. Yeah, it, crew was super friendly. So, yes, and, definitely. Um, our um, cruise director, Talita, awesome. All right. So now the not so great things. Um, I hate, hate doing these. I hoped it would be a perfect cruise. Mm -hmm. But um, we had a, a few issues with things. On the second day, which was a day at sea, um, we started noticing in the public areas it was getting kind of warm. And we thought maybe it's just because everybody is on board the ship. And I think they told us the first night there was a little over 2,200 people on board. So we thought just with that many people going in and out, you know, the air conditioner was having trouble uh, keeping going. But we kind of noticed it started being like that almost every day. So probably about in the, four, it, four to five days. It, and even in the cabin, like during the day, we kept the curtains closed and everything, but it got really warm. Yeah, it, um, the second night, which was the at sea day, was also a formal night. And I almost died from heat exhaustion <laughs> in the main dining room because they have all the windows in there. So like the sun's beating in, I'm in a suit and it was absolutely miserable, but it went on, I mean, in the theater, it was like there was very little air circulation. So I don't know if they were having some issues, whether it was just, you know, being an older ship, it doesn't have as, as good of an air conditioning system. And then some of the ports we were in, the, the heat index was 104. So it may not just been able to keep up, but like. We won't do another Caribbean cruise in or, the summer. <laughs> yeah, at least on a on an older ship, so. Um, so hopefully that was that was just the outside temperature, not actually something on the ship, but it got hot at points. So a lot of the cruise ships are going to these apps for um, handling everything on board the ship. And that's great. When it works. Yeah. The Wi-Fi, they have a public Wi-Fi that you don't have to pay for to be able to use the app. And it's, it is only for the app. I do want to stress that it was so up and down like it didn't work half the time my phone would be constantly popping up wi-fi is offline wi-fi is online and it was offline. like one day like you know because we we went through two time zones you know back and then forward and so we changed time four times but the app you know you want to look at the app for ship time because your phones aren't updating if they aren't connected to a service and you would look at the ship time and his ship time would be different than my ship time. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes my, by two hours. Like one, one would update, the other is wouldn't. And everything you did on the ship was by ship time. So if you, when we were days in port, you had to be back on the ship at ship time. And then, so if your app's an hour off, you potentially could miss the boat. Um, so that, that's definitely not a good thing. And we couldn't figure out what was causing it to not work. Um, and in general, I think they need some work on the app. It would like randomly log you out. You'd be looking at it and all of a sudden it would just sign you out. And then the Wi-Fi would go down and you couldn't get back on it. Um, so, and then it would sign back on and then it wouldn't load all the activity. So you couldn't see what, what time something was at. So that was like really disappointing. Um, sometimes like the old paper way where they printed out the, the schedule of the events for the day is, is sometimes better. So as far as our cabin, you know, in general, the size was good, but we did have a, a couple of things that we didn't care for as much. Um, Jen noticed some stuff with her clothing. Yeah, the cabinets were musty. So I like to unpack when I go, if, I, if I'm going to be more than a night or two, and if, when I pulled something out of the closet or the cabinet to put it on, it had kind of a musty smell. Yeah, and I left mine in the bag or in my suitcase because... You know, after the first day, she said it was like her clothes smelled. So I was like, I'm not going to put mine in the cabinet. So I just, I lived out of the suitcase. Um, and speaking of smell, we, we've heard people talk about this on other ships and have never understood what, what they meant. We People have talked about they, it smelled like poo. And <laughs> literally probably from the second day on from the bathroom. It, it smelled like poo. It smelled like poo. And... I guess it's maybe how their systems are and maybe on the older ships that 
the venting on it causes it to be able to back up into the rooms or something. So the you know being on a seven day cruise or seven night cruise that you had more poo smell building up as it went along. So that wasn't pleasant, but we you know we tried to keep the door shut to the bathroom so to keep it in there. Um, and also in the bathroom, like <laughs> Jim thinks I'm crazy. Like the sink drove me nuts. Um, <laughs> I think they didn't put the faucet quite far enough, and um, <laughs> it's a it's one of the wrap, deep round bowl ch uh, shaped sinks. So it was the faucet where the water came out was extremely close to the side. So when I try to wash my hands, um, <laughs> I've got big hands, so I couldn't hardly fit them in to get water on them. And then when it did, um, like I said, they've got really good water pressure in there. It would like shoot the water up and spray it onto the mirrors and all over the bathroom. So a lot of times I wound up just using the um, shower head in the shower just to rinse my hands off. So that was... That's a wet bath. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, this one, it, it's kind of on us. It's not a major thing because we knew before we got on. But um, it kind of became more noticeable the longer the cruise went along. But there's not a lot of thrilling things to do on the Granger of the Sea. Um, and what I mean by that is is like the the physical activity type stuff and are more more exciting things to do. Like some of the ships they have like the water slides and roller coasters and um, like ropes courses. On the Granger of the Sea you have a rock climbing wall and that is it. So that wasn't really a big thing when we got on but then when you're spending you know seven days on the ship, you kind of start like, well, what else is there to do? And well, they had, they did have other activities though. Um, they had ping pong, shuffleboard. Uh, they did a movie every night by the pool. Um, the thing with the activities that bothered me was they were so repetitive. Like four times a day, they had named that tune every day. You know, so it wasn't like you were doing different things. You were doing. The same thing, just a different topic. So you might have like Harry Potter one time and Queen the next time and Michael Jackson, but it was all the same. Yeah, it's you, you could only do Name That Tune so many times. Um, they did do some game show type things in the Centrum area, and those were a lot of fun, but still it's just, it's a game show. They were fun for, and the, but they only lasted like 30 minutes and then it was over with, for, and they only did it once a day. So that kind of... It would have been nice if they had had some more stuff to do of those type activities that really got the people involved and, and got the crowd active. On that kind of saying, we wish they had more to do. Um, God, the ship, like I told Jen, I was like, <laughs> I almost call this call this a nursing home cruise. Everything ended so early. Yeah, it. Um, other than, you know, stuff went up to like midnight and then basically midnight hit and you had your choice of either going to the casino or they did like a late night dance party, like nightclub type thing. And if I personally like later on, I like to just kind of wind down, you know, go somewhere, have a drink, listen to some music. All that stuff was done by like midnight at the latest. If, uh, if not sooner. Yeah. It, it typically the music and all that. It was like was, 11, 11, 15. Yeah. They, they would do, they would do something, but it was not, like where you could just sit down and kind of relax. So, um, yeah, most of the, like they have bars closing down at 6 PM in places. Some, and like the poolside one, I think closed down at nine. Yeah, it was, they, I or think they nine had or 10. It was early for the poolside. I think they had three bars that were open. They had the R bar, which was in the centrum area, which was probably one of our favorite bars. It stayed open mm -hmm. to one thirty. Um, the, the casino, the casino bar stayed open to one thirty. And um, then the Schooners. Club. No, the Viking Club. Yeah, it might. Well, Schooners stayed open later too. But the, the thing about Schooners is there was, that's kind of their piano bar area. But after midnight, there was nobody in there playing piano. So basically, all you'd be in there is just drinking. Uh, that's what alcoholics do. So. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we drank after midnight a couple of times. So, so they. They did have some things that they did activity wise that were extremely popular. Um, like they would do like bingo or they would do, I think, who wants to be a Caribbean air um, kind of game show. But they did them in the South Pacific Lounge, which was a beautiful venue at the back of the ship. And but it was a very decent small. It was 
bigger than the other lounges, but but not big enough to really do an event that would be popular. I mean, we um, they were having like a, a the dating game, yeah, dating game type thing in there, and we had just gotten out of one of the shows in the theater. we by the time we got down to it, the place was completely packed. It was standing room only, and I was like, you know. We're not going to stand for 45 minutes to watch this. And, and it was hot in there because there's so many people shoved into this tiny space. With the air conditioner not working great either. So, yeah. so some of the stuff we would have liked to have seen and gone to, we couldn't because it was so overcrowded. Um, so it would have been nice if they had like maybe moved those type of things that would have been popular, done them in the theater that had like two stories worth of, of seating. Specialty restaurants, we didn't eat at them, but you know, we took a look at to see if maybe we wanted to, and we noticed on some of them they had like the same items listed that, that were in the dining room that either in the on the buffet or in the main dining room. And some of these you were paying 50 plus dollars a person to go to, and some 65 to 85 dollars. And I think there was one we actually had in the main dining room that was probably one of our least favorite dishes that we had on the ship, yeah. That so. I would have been furious if I had seen that in the... That's when we kind of decided we aren't going to do the um, specialties, so... Yeah. All right, so um, another kind of issue we had, and it got a little better as it went along, but <laughs> the solarium area is supposed to be the adults-only area on the ship. It is not. It's And their their classification of adults-only is 16 and older, which is... Is okay because I guess they're thinking people are a little more mature at well, that age. Well, and not for nothing, the teenagers that I saw on this boat, like they they were very respectful and they weren't. Yeah, so you know what I mean. They were better than a lot of adults. So we're not really, you know, knocking on the sixteen year old thing, and we're we're not trying to come across as being these old people. Um, but like the first day we went in there, there were kids like four and five years old running Everywhere. running all over the place yelling and i was like it says specifically on the door you know 16 and older adults only and when i asked about it i was told that the age limit was only for the pool and the hot tubs not for the area around it because that's where the park cafe park cafe like they had the pizza and that was the place that was open late night um that they couldn't say that the kids couldn't come in there because that was there. So in my opinion, I thought, well, if I want to go to an adult only area because I didn't bring my kids and I don't want to listen to kids, I couldn't even go in there because they couldn't stop the kids. They wouldn't stop the kids, kids from coming in. So I'm not sure that that was a good thing. And, or I know it wasn't. And, and we actually didn't even go in that area. We avoided the solarium for several days. Um, and then when we finally went back, we were going in at like 1130 at night just to grab a slice of pizza. So I really wish Royal would do something and actually provide kind of an escape area. Because when you've got 2,200 people on a ship and you've got a lot of kids... Um, Sometimes you like to just get away for a little, you know, peace and quiet. So we ended up spending quite a bit of time yeah. in our in our cabin um, just to get that quiet. And you really, you know, when you're paying for that and you're having adults only, you shouldn't have to worry about that. But I don't think that per se is Royal's fault. I think that has to do with people in general. And that was... Well, I'm sorry. If it says 16 and over only on the door, I would not let my... 15 and younger kid go in there. I, Do you I would, want something, you sit here, I'll go get it for you. I would be a respectful adult and and say for these other people, um, I'm not going to take my kid in there. And, and I think, again, that was the problem in general with a lot of stuff on here was the people. Uh, we saw people, our, our first night there, we were sitting down at Schooner's Bar. They were fixing to do one of those name that tune things. And this whole family comes in. And they've got a kid that's probably... Four? Yeah, four five. or five years old. And this kid is, like, crawling all over the furniture. He's on the back. I got kicked, like, and bumped into several times. You know, I'm just trying to sit there and enjoy my drink and waiting for him to start this. And the parents are, are sitting there laughing at him. And I, I, as a parent, I would be absolutely embarrassed if my child was acting like that out in a public area. Mm -hmm. And I certainly wouldn't be laughing. 
Um, but I mean, people were doing stuff like in the solarium. We were in there today and it's, it's an enclosed area. And this guy just stands up and yells at somebody at the top of his lungs all the way across it. And I mean, that is just, it, it's supposed to be the quiet place and people are just disrespectful. They would leave trash all over the ship. Um, we were going up the stairwell and I about knocked a cup over that somebody had just stepped right at the banister to go up where you, people are reaching to grab on. Then they're going to have a, a mess to clean up, you know, and that's, that's not fair to the employees. So I really wish people would be more respectful to everybody else. And I think the cruises would be a lot better. Yep. So back to what I said at the beginning, does size really matter? Um, do you think size matters as, as far as the ship and like a ship this size? Um, I think for things to do, yes. Yeah. Um, just, just because everything was so repetitive and there was no variety. And, um, I know you had asked me earlier if I would go on this ship again. Um, I would, I would, I think I would. But I wouldn't go at this time of year. All right, summer summertime way too hot to to go um, on the ship, especially if it's being the older ship, it can't mechanically handle the mm -hmm. hot temperatures. So I I definitely would if I was going to do it, I would do it in, in either the fall or you know earlier in the spring. Yeah, the spring time. Um, but I I think I would. Would you? Yeah, I, I would do it. I mean, it's a nice. It was relaxing. It was getting away. I enjoyed it, but. Like I said, it would be nice to just have some other activities. So I think, um, you know, we asked a, an older gentleman that was sitting next to us in the dining room the first night. He was on his seventh cruise this year, and I think they said they had been on 55 cruises. Yeah. And I asked him, I said, do you prefer the smaller ships or the bigger ships? And he said, definitely the bigger ships. And I was, you know, this guy is probably in his late he's, 70s, he's, he's early 80s. 80. Yeah. You know, and I'm like... I would think somebody would enjoy, you know, somebody yep. that age would enjoy it. But he it. said there's more to do on the bigger there's ships. Yep. So. And so we we kind of feel that same way. I mean, I think from future, I think we're going to go bigger ships. And if we just want something relaxing. And, and, and I'll go to add, I think this ship would be fine if it was shorter. Had it, yeah. had, had it yeah. been like a five-day cruise. Or four night. Yeah, four yeah, night, four, five day it would have been fine, but I think the seven night, the eight day, seven night was just too much. And with being smaller, they didn't have the ability to, to you know, to do too much on it. So, but Hey, we got the ports. I really wanted to That's go right. To, I mean, so. we had a lot of fun, um, but we're going to let y'all go. Um, we're about back in port. We're going to get everything packed up and so we can get off. Um, just, if you like our channel and like this video give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the little notification bell so you'll know whenever we upload a new video see you later bye y'all oh and by the way i beg to differ that that saying has nothing to do with boats in the ocean just look at the swimming pool the ocean got a little rough on several nights and due to the small size of the ship it caused the rocking to be very noticeable as you can see this would not have been as noticeable on a bigger ship, so there is a direct correlation to the size of the boat and the motion of the ocean.